Hey, PE super chemist out there. This is chapter 13 solutions. And I think you're going to like chapter 13 better than chapter 11 and 12. I know 11 and 12 were a little bit of a kick to the crotch with the Clausius clapper on and the body centered and the face centered calculations. But chapter 13 brings back some molarity, some molality stuff that we did last, last year um, in high school chemistry. And I think you're going to find the, comp the uh, calculations to be less complicated, okay? So this is a happy, safe place to be right now. All right, so just taking it back to middle school and to last year, you guys all know that a solution is made up of a solute and a solvent. And every year, everybody always says, water is the universal solvent because, you know, they beat that in your heads in middle school. And yes, it is, but we have evolved from that into like dissolves like so i know that water is polar so water dissolves other polar substances just like nonpolar substances are going to dissolve nonpolar substances now something that is a little new is the concept of entropy and entropy is chaos and randomness and in chemistry we like to be random because if i'm running around and i'm moving all over the place there's more of a chance that i'm going to hook up with something else and something exciting in chemistry is going to happen. Um, I also gave you a slide in your notes that said like dissolves like, and that's what I was just talking about with the polarity, which is not new to us. Now, chapter 13 starts by giving you some different formulas and asking you, do you think this is gonna be soluble in water or not? And again, because water is polar, I'm looking for things that are polar, things that have some hydrogen bonding, okay? That's always like a quick, good sign for that. So, and all of these notes are posted in Schoology, you know, the PowerPoint, so feel free to look at those. So when I look at this, this is what vitamin C looks like. Is it gonna be soluble in water? Sure, it's gonna be soluble because I see all of those alcohol groups on it. The OHs, remember, are alcohol groups. And anytime I see that alcohol group, I know it's polar and there's a whole bunch of them on there. Okay, now when I look at vitamin K, its structure is a little different. Okay, I'm not seeing those alcohol groups. I do see the double bonded oxygen, but no, it's, it's just not polar enough to dissolve in water. So you really want to look for those alcohol groups. That is kind of a, a quick, quick way to check. Now, then I gave you vitamin A. Well, yeah, there is that alcohol group right on the end, but that's got a bunch of stuff on the other end away from that alcohol that is non-polar and there's so much of it that that's not really going to be very water soluble okay because you got that big chunky non-polar end um then as you read chapter 13 because you all read your textbooks all the time every night you'll notice this formula where it starts talking about heat of solution and heat of hydration this is totally new for us we did not do this last year but it's not really that hard, okay? So the formula that you're gonna see in your textbook and also in your notes is, I'm gonna say heat of solution and I'm gonna abbreviate it that way, is gonna be equal to the heat of the, oh, sugar, 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 solute. As I was writing that, I knew I was having a mini stroke. Heat of the solute, plus what's called the heat of hydration, okay? That's having that water surrounded and dissolving it, okay? Um, what exactly is the heat of hydration? It's when you take something like this and you convert it to something like that. It's being surrounded by water, okay? That's all it is. And that kind of makes sense if I'm hydrating, I'm gonna be surrounded by water. Now, you're going to have to be able to remember this formula, and you're going to have to be able to apply it to calculations, okay? No big thing there. We love to do math and chemistry. So if you look through your notes, the next slide is dun, 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 an example, and it's an example involving silver nitrate, okay? And it says silver nitrate has a lattice energy of negative 820 kilojoules per mole, and a heat of solution of negative 22.6 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the heat of hydration. Well, I have my formula here, 
Heat of hydration is what I'm calculating for, so that becomes my X. All right, it said that the heat of solution was negative 22.6 kilojoules per mole. It never in the problem said anything about heat of solid. Well, here's the daily poo poo. Heat of solute is the same as the um, lattice energy. And I told you the lattice energy is negative 820, except you switched the sign. So in the problem, the lattice energy is negative 820. When I want to use it for heat of solute, I change the sign, but use the same number. Now, how easy is that? All of you guys can solve for X and get an answer. Those answers are going to be in kilojoules per mole because the numbers in the problem were kilojoules per mole. That is super easy for smart students like you. All right, the next thing that chapter 13 talks about are some solubility curves. We did this last year in high school chemistry, and it was super easy for all of you. It's when we look at tables like that, and you just read the graph. I'll ask you something at 30 degrees Celsius. You'll look up, and you'll find its y-axis coordinate. Now, one of the things we also did last year, again, nothing new, was I would give you points to plot and you would determine whether they were saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. If the point landed on the line, it was saturated. If it was above the line, it was supersaturated. And under the line, it was unsaturated. Might want to keep this as a reference because you are going to be creating the solubility curve for potassium nitrate for the lab in this unit. Okay? The next topic, and I feel like I'm flying through this because we did most of it last year. The next topic is Henry's Law. If you remember from last year, we talked about after a long, hard day of work at King William High School, Tracy Folks goes home and she cracks open an ice cold can of root beer. Okay. And why does the can make that sound when I open it? Because there's a pressurized gas pushing down on the liquid in there. And if there wasn't a pressurized gas pushing down on it, the bubbles or the gas wouldn't stay in the liquid. And as I, I release that, and that's why my root beer will go flat if I don't drink it in enough time, okay? Well, we discussed Henry's Law conceptually, talking about it that way last year. We didn't do the calculations to go with it. And so this year you will. So S stands for the solubility of the gas. K is a constant that you have to be given for whatever substance you're talking about. And P is the pressure of the gas. And in your notes, I tried to copy the table that's in your textbook. There is a table that has Henry constants in your textbook, and I tried to put it in your notes as well. Okay, so that's there as a reference just in case you don't open that textbook maybe as much as you should. All right. So let's do a Henry Law calculation example, okay? On your next slide, what is the pressure of carbon dioxide required to maintain the carbon dioxide concentration in a bottle of club soda at 0.12 molar and 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, so solubility is going to be in molarity. So my molarity goes there. The Henry constant for carbon dioxide is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2, and pressure is what I'm looking for. And again, that's why I think this chapter is going to be so easy for you guys. These calculations are pretty straightforward as opposed to chapter 11 and chapter 12. Okay? So you should be able to solve for X. I got something around 3.5. That answer is going to be in atmospheres, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, the next thing that gets talked about in Chapter 13 is molarity and molality. We did all of that last year. Molarity is moles over liters. Molality is moles over kilograms. So those were really easy conversions for us. We also, in honors, if you took my honors class, we also did percent by mass, okay? And that's really easy. It sounds easy. It's just, it has percent in the name, and percentages are just ratios multiplied by 100. 
So the example under percent by mass in your notes, okay? So I'm on this slide, percent by mass, and I'm going to go ahead and do the example there with you. And you're going to be like, oh, this is so easy. I want to major in chemistry. All right, what is the volume in milliliters of a soft drink that is 10.5% sucrose by mass and contains 78.5 grams of sucrose? The density of the solution is 1.04. This to me is just a big conversion, like some dimensional analysis. I would set this up by taking that 78.5 grams of sucrose. And we always take what's given and we put it over one. That's right, because you're not messing it up doing that. All right, now, I don't want to be in grams of this. I eventually want to be in milliliters of solution, all right? Well, here's the dealy poo-poo. If you're 10.5% sucrose in your solution, that means there's 10.5 grams of sugar for every 100 grams of solution, okay? That's what that percentage means. It means there's 10.5 out of 100. And then once I'm in grams of solution, I can go to milliliters of solution because I gave you density in this problem. And the density was 1.04. I generally don't put anything up by milliliter. If that gives you the heebie-jeebies, just put a one there, okay? And then when I plugged all this in my calculator, 719 milliliters of solution, okay? Um, Let's do one that's got a couple of things going on. I know for your calculation sheet for this chapter, I put a couple on there where I said, find the molarity, find the molality, find the weight percent. Did, 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 did. So let's do an example where you've got to find a couple of different things. Well, you know what? Let's do molarity first. Here we go. What is the molarity of a 6.56% by mass glucose solution? The density of the solution is 1.03. All right, well... The first thing I remember is molarity is moles over liters, right? Okay, so I got to figure out how many moles I have. I know that I have 6.56 grams of glucose. And the reason I know that is I'm going to assume 100 grams because it's going to make my life easier. And I'm going to convert these grams to moles. And we can all do that. That's an easy peasy. Moles gets one, grams gets the number on the periodic table. And that's how many moles of glucose I have. Now, again, assuming I got 100 grams of the solution, I got to figure out how many liters of the solution do I have. So I can go grams to milliliters using the density. And in the problem, the density given was 1.03. Again, I don't put anything in front of milliliters. If that bothers you, throw one up there. I don't need milliliters. I need liters. So liters gets one, milli gets a thousand, 0.097 liters. Now I can go back. I got moles. I got liters. I can put it up here. Okay, moles over liters, and I end up with 0.37 moles. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I think this is probably a good breaking point for part one of your chapter 13 notes. Meet me right back here for part two of your chapter 13 notes. See you in class, guys.